What is up homies, my name is Felix and I am here back again with another video for you all today. And this video today is going to be just like a little bit different kind of. I'm kind of going to be just giving you guys some ideas in this one, just giving you some things that you can use in your beats to maybe spice up your beats a little bit, make them cooler, more interesting. Because basically somebody asked me a little while ago like what kind of transitions can you put into your beats to make them sound more interesting and so they don't get repetitive. And so it can just have a cool little segue from one section to the other section of your beat. So yeah, that's what I'm going to be showing you guys today. I'm going to be showing you guys a bunch of different transitions that you can use in your beats. I'm gonna be starting off pretty simple, you know, really, really basic stuff, and then I'm gonna be getting more advanced with automations and stuff. And I am gonna be using FL Studio for this video today, but a lot of this stuff I'm sure you can do in other DAWs as well, you know, Ableton, Logic, perhaps LMS, the process will be, you know, a little bit harder and stuff like that. But yeah, so yeah, make sure you guys check out my Instagram and my SoundCloud down in the description below along with the playlist of songs I've produced, my beat store, my Discord, all that stuff. Feel free to check it out if you want to. And now we can get into this video. All right, so right now I have a pretty simple little beat going on. It kind of sounds like this as it is. So yeah, it's not fully mixed or anything yet, but I wanted to add in a bunch of transitions here and make it really cool and spice it up and stuff. So I'm gonna just show you guys every transition in the whole video on this beat right here. And I'm just gonna, you know, mesh them all together and see how it sounds. So the first thing that I'm gonna start off with, like I said, I'm gonna start pretty simple and then I'm gonna, you know, move on to more advanced stuff. The first thing is, you know, simple little pauses in the beat. Most of the time in my trap beats or whichever other beats I'm making, what I like to do is I like to take the hi-hat and right before all the drums and everything drop in, what I like to do is cut out the hi-hats right as that last snare hits so you can just go to where your hi-hats are left click and then drag it over and it'll just add a little bit of a pause right before all the drums come in and just that little break right there adds a little bit of tension and then everything drops in and you know releases the tension so what you can also do is you can drag it to here if you want and it'll add even more tension kind of So yeah, that's one thing you can do. You can also pause all the drums together, kind of like this. And then also, if you want to, you can do it kind of the opposite way. So I'm gonna drag these back and then I'm going to drag the melodic components so that these pause instead of the drums pausing. However, if you're gonna do that, you maybe should add a little bit of delay so that it continues on a slight bit after, you know, so it's not just like an abrupt ending right there. But yeah, that's really the first thing is, you know, any pauses of any kind, you know, melodic pauses, drum pauses, just hi-hat pauses, pauses on just certain instruments. Like if you want to, I could just, you know, take this out. So next, another little thing I like to do is add just a simple little crash. And people underestimate how far a little crash noise can go. So I got this one right here. And this is just gonna come in when all the drums come in. So it's gonna sound like this. Another thing you can do, which is kind of similar to the crash, but it's almost like the opposite, is adding in risers. All right, so I got this riser right here, but what I'm gonna do is I'm going to bring down the volume by turning down the out. And this is just going to, you know, make it a similar volume to the crash. Because one thing you wanna do if you're adding a riser is to make it a pretty similar, pretty equal volume to your crash noise. So now with the riser and the crash, it's gonna sound like this. So that sounds pretty good. And then also I forgot we're gonna do this too. One little thing that's a little bit more complicated that I'm gonna show you guys right now is you can assign your riser to a mixer track by clicking on it and hitting Control L. And what you can do is you can add a little bit of delay on it. So I'm gonna turn the delay up to here. And now when the riser comes in, it's gonna sound like this. I like to do that sometimes just so that the riser doesn't stop super abruptly and it kind of keeps going. All right, so another thing you can do to kind of spice up your transitions a little bit is just add in random sounds here and there. You know, just like random people's voices, like voice clips and stuff, old TV kind of vinyl sounding noises, you know, literally anything. You can add in anything you want. What I'm gonna do for this one is I'm gonna add in a little bit of like a, you know, rocket ship countdown timer. And I think this might sound pretty cool if I can, you know, get the timing right and everything. So I just right clicked on my sound that I wanted to use. I did edit in audio editor and then it brings it up in Edison. And now I'm gonna find the part where he goes three, two, one, and then I'm gonna select that, drag it in, and put that in where the transition is. So I think it's like right three, here. Two, one. And then just drag this in. And now we got to match this up to the tempo. All right, so now I got it matched up the way that I want it, and it sounds like this. Three, two, one. 
but I want that to echo a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this part where he says one over like this and then put that there. And now I'm just going to right click, do make unique. And then I'm going to bring the volume down like this. And then I'm just gonna do that one more time right when the drums drop in, right click, make unique and then pull the volume down again, and it's gonna sound like this. So yeah, it's a nice little effect there, and now what we can do is we can assign all these to one mixer track and add a little bit of like a bandpass filter or change around the effects just a little bit so that we can get it sounding a little bit more uniform with all the other sounds in the track. So yeah, basically I'm just gonna go in here, go to EQ, uh, go to my bandpass, and just go like this. And now maybe add a little bit of reverb on it. So the next thing we're gonna do, which is kind of in line with the last one, is we're going to add in some drum fills. Okay, so I just grabbed this little drum fill, it sounds like this. I might actually not put it right in the beginning, I might put it uh, at the second transition right here, because I think the beginning is getting a little crowded at this point. Um, so I'm going to just drag these back like this. So with this drum fill right now, it's kind of weak. So what I want to do is do left click and now control L. And now I'm going to add some reverb. I'm gonna EQ out some of the high end. Also, I added some sound goodizer on it, and now it sounds like this. So the next thing I'm gonna show you guys is different filters that you can use. So I'm gonna show you guys bandpass, low pass, and high pass filter. And my favorite is bandpass, as you guys maybe have noticed, because I like using it quite a lot. But basically what you do to add in a filter or any sort of automation for that matter, for those of you who don't know, is you can go to the master track, because we're gonna put these on the master track, and make sure that you have your soft clipper on and make sure that you have you know whatever else you put on it above that. So I'm going to start out with a bandpass first. So we're gonna go to the EQ, and now we're going to go like this, all the way down, this all the way down. So basically, if this is your frequency range, it's gonna just cut off everything except for this like middle area. And basically that's what a bandpass is. It just allows everything that's in the middle of the high end and the low end to pass through and it cuts out everything else. And with a low pass, it allows the low end to pass through and it cuts out the high end. And with the high pass, it allows the high end to pass through and the low end gets cut off. So yeah, that's a pretty simple explanation of low pass, high pass, blah, 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 all that stuff. We're gonna make our shape like this and make our shape like this. And now we're gonna listen to where it sounds good for the filter to be. So right here, I'm going to just listen. So I feel like there's still a lot of frequency still in there. So what I'm gonna do is just drag these like this. And kind of with a bandpass, what you want to do is essentially make it sound like as if you're holding your headphones like this, or as if you're, you know, have headphones like, you know, Apple headphones or something like that, and you're just holding them like out here. That's the kind of sound that you're going for. So just kind of like a really lo-fi effect. So basically what we can do with this is add it at certain points in our beat. So if we right click on the little knob here that is the EQ, we can right click and then hit A on our keyboard. And now it'll bring up a little bit of an automation clip right here on the bottom, and we can adjust where we want it to play. So uh, we can have it play in just the beginning. And as you can see, it fades out. Or what I like to do sometimes is I like to add it right before a transition. So if you click and then go like this, uh, click and click, and that's gonna sound like this. So yeah, you can adjust it however you like because, you know, let's say those drums, I want to get more of the frequencies of those drums in. So I'll probably go into the filter and I'll adjust, you know, where the, you know, bandpass is cutting things off at. But that just depends on whatever the track that you're making sounds like and what the frequencies in your track are. And also what you can do is you can have this lead up like that. And then have it drop off once the drums drop in. So basically, as you can see, I just um, made one dot that goes up to the top and then another one that just goes straight to the bottom. And also make sure that when you right click on this, it says single curve and nothing else because if it's on hold, it'll just be like a square and uh, you don't want that. You want it to be single curve like that. And this will apply if you have a low pass or a high pass. So a low pass would look more like this. And as you can hear, you're getting more of the low end right there. And then if it's a high pass, it's gonna look more like this on the high end. As you can hear, we're getting a lot of high frequencies right there. So another little thing you can do with automations that I kind of just found out about more recently is you can automate individual sections, like individual samples within your beat. So if you want to, you can go up here to any one of these sounds. Let's say I want this sound to kind of fade in. I can right click and then just do um, automate and then volume. And now it'll bring up a little automation thing right here. And then you can click on this side to drag it down and then click on the middle to kind of give it more of a curve. And now this will start out with no volume and and then it'll build up.
as you can hear it kind of swells upward and I think that's a pretty cool effect also you can do it the opposite way if you want so we can bring the bottom down like this and then have it kind of fade out and that's kind of an alternative to just cutting out the melody right there so instead of cutting it out you can just fade it down and that'll be kind of a smoother transition if you want to do it that way you can do it that way so another thing that I really love to do and you guys have seen me do this quite a bit is use a slow down or a tape stop effect and to get this tape stop effect basically you have to search up D blue tape stop on Google and you'll get a bunch of other D blue effects as well but yeah basically that's how you get the tape stop and it's a pretty simple plug-in there's literally nothing fancy about it it's just these three knobs and the way you do it is you can um, adjust the slowdown so if you turn the slowdown up it's gonna be really fast but if you turn it down it's gonna be really slow and it's gonna be like and then essentially the trigger is the thing that you automate so you right click on it and then you hit a and now once it's there you can choose where you want the slowdown to activate so if I want it to be right before the crash what I'm gonna do is I'm going to click like here at a point and now click right here and at a point and the way the trigger works and the, the way the automation works I'm pretty sure is once it gets to like 50% is when the slowdown effect will occur so basically we can kind of zoom in here and you can see that like right here in the middle that'll be about 50% you know because 50% is in the middle and this is where the effect will start so that's a pretty cool one. And then another thing I like to do with the slowdown sometimes is I like to slow it down and then just stop the beat completely and then bring the beat back in. So the way you do that is you can add a slowdown right when the drums drop in. So I know this might be a little bit weird, but it's gonna sound cool, trust me. So right when the drums drop in, it's gonna fade out. And then right there it comes back in. But what I like to do when it comes back in is add another crash. So it'll be like this. Okay, so another thing you can do here is you can add some gross beat and you can add gross beat at like only certain parts or you can add it, you know, at whole sections if you want to. So basically this is like the halftime effect. So you can either use gross beat or you can use halftime. If you have FL Studio, you probably already have gross beat, but um, if you don't, if you're using something else, then halftime works just fine. Or there's other, you know, plugins that you can use, I'm sure as well. But yeah, halftime I've been using a lot lately, but also with gross speed, the cool thing is you can add other effects. So you can add like some side chaining, some gating, different stuff like that. Um, it's totally up to you. Gross Beat has a ton of different stuff that you can mess around with. And basically, if you're using halftime, you can just click on it and then pretty much do nothing. You can change some of the parameters if you want a little bit, but pretty much just the default preset will work just fine. But if you're in Gross Beat, what you want to do is you want to go in here and then you want to take this last uh, thing here and then just drag it down to like halfway between this line here and the top. And then you're just going to right click and go single curve. And this is going to add that halftime slowdown effect. And what you can do is you can click here and then do um, click reduction and then set it to high, which that'll help it not be clicky or anything. So that's how you do it with grow speed. And then whichever one you're using, you can right click on and then just do create automation clip. Uh, and then it'll create it here. And usually what I like to do for this is I usually like to put it at the beginning. So it'll start off really slow. and then have it fade into like a normal tempo. Or what you can also do is do the same thing that I've been doing with the other ones, where you add it right before a transition. So I'll add it just like right here. So basically it's gonna sound like this. So I think that sounds pretty awesome. It gives you kind of a grungy feel, but also what you could do is you could pair up other effects with it. So you could go like this, put the EQ on it so that it sounds like this. You know, obviously different combinations of effects will sound cool together. So another transition that I like to do sometimes is adding like beat skips. I don't exactly know what this is called, you know, the technical term for it. I know some people call it like the Pharrell, you know, intro or whatever. Basically you just cut the entire beat into like the first bar and then you just repeat the first bar and then you have the drums all play. So if I wanted to, I can uh, do it like right here. So I'm gonna chop out this bar right here and then I'm just gonna delete everything else. Just delete everything. And now I'm gonna do control click and select all these and I just do control B three times and now this is gonna have like a cool little stutter effect so that sounds cool as it is but one thing I like to do sometimes is I like to select all of this and then you can just do alt hold down alt and then click on the side here and just give it like more of a stuttery feel so all of the volume will kind of chop out here and it's almost like a DJ is like going like so yeah, you guys get the idea. It's a pretty cool effect. And once again, you can add some EQ on it. So it sounds like this. 
or you know maybe another idea you can do is you can add the tape stop in here so maybe try to get it to where it's at 50% right when the last little hit is so maybe drag it up to like here so essentially I want it to sound like this just like that so you can play around with it get it to sound however you'd like it to sound so another little idea here which might not work with every single beat but is kind of to start certain patterns early or start certain patterns late let's say there was no drums playing here what I could do is I could bring in the snare um, like right before the other drums come in so it'd be like this So yeah, you guys get the idea there. And then also what you could do is you could start patterns late. So right when this drops in, maybe I want to have not the drums playing. So now it's going to stutter into this section. And a lot of times it sounds better if you give it a little bit more time. So I think I'll go like this. And then also it might sound good if you add another crash in here like this. But right now this sounds a little bit dry. So what we can do is pair it up with more effects if we want to. We can add, you know, another little, you know, tape stop right here just to give it uh, a nice little transition again. So that might sound good if you like that. You can also add, you know, some filters in there if you want to. Whatever you want to do, obviously get super creative with it. Make it sound interesting. Make it sound cool. Like I said in the beginning, you know, starting out pretty simple. But those small things, like I said, you know the crash can go a long way a little riser can go a long way what you want to do here the ultimate goal is to just build tension and then release the tension and that's how you're going to kind of get that nice little transition effect from one section to another and you know certain things might not sound right because you might not have enough tension built up or you might not you know drop in the tension enough so like if your drums really aren't hitting like that what you want to do maybe is turn up your drums a little bit turn up your kick turn up your bass or whatever so that it really slaps back in after your transition you know so you gotta you know have a good balance of the these things but yeah obviously there's like a million other little effects that I can show you here and there you know you can add maybe some distortion and then some EQ paired up with it whatever you want to do whatever other combinations you want to come up with there's literally infinitely more things that you can do with your beats to add you know some cool transitions here and there but either way I hope I was able to spark your guys's creativity just a little bit in this video show you maybe a couple little things you might have not known about before you know inspire you to make your beats sound really dope and awesome so yeah let me know what your guys's personal favorite transitions are down in the comments below. I think mine has got to be adding like little random effects in there like the 3, 2, 1. I think that just sounds really cool. And then also, you know, obviously the classic little tape stop. But yeah, that's pretty much going to do it for me. I know it wasn't a lot in this video, but I hope you guys still enjoyed nonetheless. Um, so yeah, make sure you guys check out my Instagram, my SoundCloud down in the description below, along with my beat store, Discord, all that other stuff, uh, songs I've produced, you know, you know the drill, you guys know the vibes already. But anyways, yeah, I will see you guys in the next one. I'm gonna roll, let's get it. I'm gonna roll, let's get it. She wanna go, I'm with it. She wanna go, I'm with it. I'm gonna roll, let's get it. I'm gonna roll, let's get it. She wanna go.